we've tweaked the tactic just a smidgen again and another new star has emerged. Hello and welcome to part 76 of It's Coming Home. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we are away against Leighton Orient and at home against Northampton. Since you were last with me, mix, mixed form. Re- really mixed form. We were top of the league for a spell. Weren't we top of the league last episode? And then it's kind of kind of gone a little bit wrong. Um, that was a poor run. Uh, we got thumped by Liverpool, but we did bring in some money. I promised money. There you go. We did bring in some money. More than that, actually, but we're hemorrhaging it so quickly. Half of it is already gone, which is, I mean, that's a terrifying... We had like 400 grand come in from the Liverpool game. The financial situation here. We've got we've got to sell a million pound player every transfer window for the foreseeable just to survive. And I don't know who the next million pound sale is going to be. Roll on. Roll on the transfer window. We'll sell Leric Fernandez again. Uh, but that I think that it knocked us for six a little bit uh, because we then didn't win a league game for three games. Um, some poor form, um, conceding a lot of goals, not really creating very much. Uh, but then we tweaked the system and we decided, or I decided, I had a look at it and thought there's no playmaker in this system. So I changed the attacking midfielder position to be a playmaker to allow us to get a playmaker in because the traditional 4-3-1-2 we did with Nuneaton last year had a playmaker here or sometimes a playmaker here, sometimes both, uh, but it doesn't really suit the, any of these players to be our playmaker. Uh, but this guy, who hadn't really been in the team, Dean Lloyd, uh, had been had been sat on the bench a lot um, while the other attacking midfielder we brought in, he was a little bit more direct um, he was playing, but switch to the playmaker. Lloyd suits it perfectly, and Dean Lloyd is starting to look like a bit of a player. He's still only 18. He has five-star potential, played six games for us now, one goal, four assists, averaging a 7.4, also scored in the cup for us as well. He is looking like possibly the final piece of the jigsaw. That's what I'm hoping, because if we are going to be putting on a, a serious automatic promotion challenge... We do need to start turning the form around a little bit uh, because we've fallen down to 15th place in the league. We're still only two points off the top and, of course, Chester are top. Uh, but we do have the top scorer in the division. So we've got a free scoring striker again, creative players around him, the pace of Anthony Harris, the strongest midfield in the league. Hopefully, we'll figure out a way to stop conceding so many goals because the defence is very much our downfall. Uh, but this is the team that we're going to be putting out there for today's game against Leighton Orient. Um, we're going for Humphreys in goal. A back foot. Why is he playing as that? Why is he playing? Past Kev, why have you picked Sass Davis rather than Proctor? What's wrong with Proctor? Um, I guess form, maybe, is what's wrong with Proctor. I've, I mean, I've, I guess... No, I don't want to bring... I don't want. Past Kev had, had his reasons. He must have had his reasons for making that change. But Sass Davis has not been part of this team for a while. But I guess he's coming in today. Billy Sass Davis is back, everybody. That shows how desperate the defence is getting. So Wearmouth right, Sass Davis and Gregson at the back. Fernandez McCormick Sawinski is the best midfield in the league. Then Lloyd in behind, free scoring Matondo and just super fast Anthony Harris. He's not even that fast looking at his actual physicals. Um, but he he uses his pace intelligently and it makes him appear faster than he is. He does the first yard in his head. Was that Teddy Sheringham who did that? But then, to be fair, Teddy Sheringham was slow and that was pretty much the only yard he did. So, who knows? Let's let's get into the game. I, don't, I didn't even look where Orient are in the league, so I don't know if this is a game we're supposed to be winning. Um, apparently, we owe them a win after the last game, so let's go out there and try and beat them. Play. Where are Orient? Orient are rock bottom. Goodness me, we should be back to winning ways today. If we don't win this one, then our promotion push is taking a severe hit because if we can't beat the team who are bottom of the league, um, then, then we've got problems. They're not just bottom over, they are rock bottom. They're five points away from safety. This should be, you would think, a fairly comfortable win. There's Lloyd playing it out to Gregson, who's got loads of space to get across in. Uh, but instead just sort of dilly-dallies on the ball, but eventually finds Swinski. It's back with Lloyd again. Uh, he finds Anthony Harris, and Harris is there. Sixth goal of the season now for Harris. And with 10 minutes on the clock, it's Orient nil, home one, and another assist clocked up for Dean Lloyd. 
a bit of a fortuitous one this time. Um, he picks the ball up there and it kind of eventually finds Anthony Harris. It's gone down as a Lloyd assist though. So statistically, he keeps his run of assists going. I think he's close to assist an assist a game since being in the team, which for an 18-year-old playing his first ever games of professional football is a ridiculous statistic. Right, let's build on this and go and grab some more goals. As it stands, that pushes us back up to third in the league. Chester and Luton must both already be winning as well because the the two-point gap that we started with is still there, but we are leapfrogging some of the teams around them as it stands at the moment. Harris almost scoring with another fortuitous deflection. I'm not going to complain if we start getting deflections and scuffed shots and things like that going our way. I would be quite happy to take as much luck as the game wants to throw my way. I think I've had my fair share of bad luck situations over the years of playing football manager that I'm absolutely not going to complain if we start to have a few 50-50 things fall in our favour. We have absolutely dominated possession in that first half. 63% possession. We haven't done a huge amount with it, but importantly, we have gone 1-0 up. We do need to extend that lead in the second half, though. So... What can we say to them to try and do that? I think we're going to be passionate. And, yeah, the media have praised you. Go out there and show why you've been getting the praise. Because I don't think we've... We don't seem to be trying to put on a show just yet. So let's go out there in the second half. Try and put on a bit of a show. Get a few more goals in Matondo. Show Lloyd... Let Lloyd show how good he is. Let the midfield three show off a little bit. That's what we don't want. We certainly don't want to have to be relying on our goalkeeper or our defence very much the week. But this is such a Kev team. It's how, what are we, eight or nine years into home now? And it is absolutely a team in my own, own image at this point. We're, we're a 4 3 1 2. We're an attacking team. We've got bags of goals in us and we can't defend to save our lives. It couldn't be more of a cliche Kev team. McCormick out to Gregson. Gregson shoots from the edge of the area. I don't really know what he's playing out there with. So many attacking players ahead of him that he can just try and slot the ball into. And it goes over. And with 20 minutes to go, we're still only 1-0 ahead. And it worries me a little bit that we could throw this away. Uh, Matondo isn't playing very well at all. We've got three striker options on the bench. My assistant manager says Will Swan is the man. Um, I'm aware you lot are watching, though, so it has to be Mick Powell who comes on. Um, Fernandez also not playing particularly well. I don't want to bring Shane Phillips on for him, though. Can Lloyd play back in the normal centre midfield? We need Carmichael on the bench or Bakinson in situations like this. I know you're all going to say, Kev, start picking your own bench. You're aware you've got three strikers, two right-backs and a defensive midfielder on your bench. No, I'll level with you. I was not aware of that. That's a bit stupid. Doesn't leave me with a huge amount of options when the best, one of the best players on the pitch is our right-back, so these two aren't coming on. <sighs> Lloyd can't play in midfield, I don't think. I was checking that, wasn't I? Oh, actually, you know what? You know what? Get back there, Mr. Lloyd. Let's see if you're any good at this. But I'm going to switch things up a little bit and I'm going to tell you to be a playmaker back there. And you are going to be an attacking midfielder. And that will do for now. And then if we're still... Let's have some passion. If it's still 1-0 with 10 minutes to go, Shane Phillips can come on as well. And I think we'll bring him on for Swinski, drop back to a diamond... And just just try and hold on at that point. Weymouth into McCormick. Across to Lloyd, who's now playing deeper than he's ever played in his life. Um, I know that because I've seen every minute of football that man has played. Apart from youth football and stuff. But that doesn't even count. Mick Powell is in behind and fires it. I'd, it's unfair to Mr Powell to say that was straight at the keeper. Because he hit it with such oomph. Um, and did force a corner. There's right from the corner, but... Doesn't really get anything on it at all. Other scores must be going our way. So we've moved up to second now. Still two points behind Chester. And ridiculous. this game gets more and more ridiculous, this save. Because it's now us and Chester, first and second, again. How many times over the years have we been in that exact situation? There we go. We're making the change I talked about. Um, so McCormick and Lloyd can be our two-man midfield. Phillips in behind and Swan basically playing as an extra striker. We could. E there's an even argument that we could push Swan... In between the front, to, in between the front two, and do a pro proper front three, and that's a that is an argument I've seen people make in the comments as well. And Swan's natural position as a striker is a deep line forward, so he would fit into that perfectly. So maybe we'll do that at some point, but not today. We've we've ground out result there against a team that we should have thumped. 
So I am going to tell him that was a bit of a let-off. Because if we do that again in the next game, I mean, to be fair, it's Cobblers. Uh, they, ain't any, they ain't any challenge, are they? I mean, look at that. Cobblers and McDonald's down there in the relegation zone. If Posh were up in mid-table, that would look beautiful. As it is, that, that ruins it a little bit. Let's go and play the Cobblers. Right, no changes for the Northampton game, because why change a winning team? Although I have made some changes to the bench. Swan picked up an injury, so easy to put Bakinson onto the bench, and I've put Proctor back onto the bench as well, um, just so that we don't have two right-backs down there. I've, I've still not picked the whole thing myself, but, you know, that's better than nothing, surely. I've I've made sure it's a reasonably balanced bench. I still have two strikers on there that I probably... I doubt there'll ever be a time where I bring them both off in the same game. Bring them both on in the same game, but you never know. Today might be that day. Um, there you go. Media have been praising you recently. Go put on a performance for us. Uh, we are at the Surenic Nuhu Stadium, and hopefully we can find a performance in us somewhere. I want to, I want you to see Matondo at his best because when he plays well, he's brilliant. But I don't. I'm trying to think back to yesterday's episode. I think he did score a few goals yesterday, didn't he? So he's not he's not scoring all of these goals in secret. I just I need the Mick Powell fan club to see that he is worthy of keeping Mick Powell out of the team. And um, so a couple of goals today would go a long way towards helping with that because I was just looking at Mick Powell's profile again because he came top of the training reports for the week. So he's trying to do a Mick Powell again, had a look at his team report. First thing on his pros, the fans have a great affinity with this player. And I'm, you're telling me, it's all I hear about in the comments, how great Mick Powell is. He hasn't scored regularly since the conference, but he's great. <laughs> it's not that I don't like him. I think he's brilliant. Uh, he was a great player in the Northern Premier League. He's just not a League One player, and it's a shame. Uh, Matondo hits the post, but then weirdly doesn't follow in. Harris isn't following in either, and Northampton get a little bit of a let-off there, and now they've got a free kick. And we, This is where we don't want to see the ball, because we can't defend. Lloyd does brilliantly, though, to come away with it, and we've got a bit of a counter-attack on. It's three on two. Matondo is there and scores. We did have Harris in the middle of us as the spare man, but once again... Dean Lloyd picking up an assist. I mentioned at the start, we've got a new potential hero here in the shape of Dean Lloyd because that's an incisive breakaway and he picks the pass perfectly and Northampton are, are, are filling their underpants at that point because Matondo can shoot and score as he did and if he chooses to square it, it's Anthony Harris in the middle. And as it stands at the moment, Chester must be losing because we've gone top of the league. Sawinski, it can't quite get there. Sass Davis plays it across to Harris, though. I don't really know what Northampton are doing here. It even says at the bottom of the screen that Northampton are all over the place. This is terrible defending. Free kick comes in from right, evades everybody. Sass Davis does well to keep it in play, and Harris is just stood there all on his own. Nobody's tracked Anthony Harris's run. I don't think anybody expected Sass Davis to get to the ball. An inspired change, bringing Sass Davis back into the team. And there's Lloyd, and it's just over. And we're we're playing very well all of a sudden. What are Chester doing in their game? Chester are losing 3-1 at home to Donny. And... Uh, yeah, the league table is looking pretty pleasant around about now. But then we were top of the league at the end of the last episode and then it all went wrong for half a dozen games. So I don't... <laughs> it's it's like the reverse of how my saves usually go. Sometimes I get a few questions asked because, Kev, you realise you only ever win when the camera's not on. Are you just reloading? And obviously I'm not. But this is like a reverse situation of that where... We're, we're losing all the games when I'm playing on my own. But then as soon as the camera's on, they decide to put on a performance, end the episode top of the league. And then I, I, you must be wondering what I'm doing in between. Uh, am I playing Mick Powell every game? I'd love Mick Powell. Am I playing him every game while you like, aren't watching? That, is that why we're not winning? Uh, but no, it was just Liverpool ruined us last time. And hopefully we're not going to play Liverpool again anytime soon. Oh, that was that was close. And it looked like Humphreys banged his head into the post. I don't think he did. I think it's just the way things are animated. But it looked like he collided with the post there. Uh, but luckily, goal doesn't go in. And there's Dean Lloyd again. Third goal of the season for Lloyd. He's got a goal and assist again today. Only 18 years old. We will absolutely, as soon as we get around to the January transfer window, be looking to extend his loan to the end of next season because he is looking like a player and a half. According to our coaches, still only two-star current ability with five-star potential. He's only going to get better and better. 
we want to just throw all the money we've got. We haven't got any money to throw it, and we can't bring him in permanently, but we want to keep him on loan forever. If we can get him on loan for five years like Lewis Tyler, then then we'll be happy. He might not be happy in the fifth year if he ends up like Tyler, not playing in the fifth year, despite being a hero for the four years previously. And we're now 3-0 up against Northampton, looking good, sitting at the top of the table, and hopefully we just see things out from here. I think it's going to be substitute a clock we have paused we can't see the substitute why does it sometimes glitch out like this right uh swinski is the lowest rated player on the pitch so he can come off for bakinson uh, mccormick can come off for phillips they're two pretty easy changes again it's the midfield who they're the best midfield in league one but ratings wise i don't know maybe they can't play together we've always uh, for years we've had this Issue with Lloyd's in again. <laughs> it's his fourth goal in I think eight games. Second goal to second goal in this match. Uh, Dean Lloyd's a good player, um, but Swinski and Fernandez getting them to play together has always been a bit of a challenge. I thought putting McCormick between them would solve that problem, and we are controlling games, but we're still not really getting the kind of dominant performances from either of them individually that I'd expect. But I'm not worried too much about that when we're 4-0 up. Harris can come off. We'll, yeah, you know what? Polis guy can come on in these circumstances. He can come on as a poacher. Powell got his chance in the last game. Polis guy can get his opportunity in this game. Northampton are going to counter-attack with 10 minutes to go when they're 4-0 down. I mean, that's uh, that's some that's some tactics right there. I don't know what's going on. But then neither does their manager, clearly. There is Polis guy. Back to WMF. Can we grab number five? It would have been nice for Lloyd to grab his hat-trick there, but it seems that it's not to be, because I think we're going to be running down the clock here and blowing the final whistle. Sass Davis just has enough time to head it clear again, and we have won 4-0 at home. That's a good performance. I don't want to get too excited about it, because it was only Northampton, but it does look like we are clawing our way back into some decent form again, which is handy. It's also pretty handy that we're top of the league. Um, let's have a little look at the fixture list to see when we're going to be coming back. Um, we've got cup games. Cup games are kind of in the way. I, I know we need the an FA Cup run would be handy financially, um, but I could do without it. I'd rather just get promoted. Um, I think we'll probably play through to somewhere around here. Ports, Portsmouth and Hull. That feels like two big games. Gives us a chance to check in before we get around to... Transfer window time, potential FA Cup third round time, local derby time. Lots of reasons to come back then, but probably too big a jump to go in one go. So I think Portsmouth and Hull makes sense as a next episode. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. Thank you very much for watching.